Miami-Dade sends code enforcers to stalk people repairing homes after Hurricane Irma hits. Miami-Dade's, uh, got, a, got a word here I'm going to use here, Govpreneur Initiative after Hurricane Irma. My name is Paul Gordon, and I am with iState.tv, and this is a, a special news watch here, and we're... <laughs> We're talking about uh, the the after effects of Hurricane Irma. Earlier today, we did a story about uh, regulations, which we'll we'll put a link to that video in our in our description and and uh, uh, comment section <laughs> below. And today, we're going to talk about how Miami Dade saw an opportunity and didn't waste it. H hats off to the governors at the. Miami Dade County offices. News 7 Miami is reporting on an act of government abuse in the wake of Hurricane Irma that is, well, it's, it's difficult to believe. According to the report, Miami Dade County decided the best way to help citizens after Hurricane Irma was to send out a code enforcer to give citations to people while they're trying to clean up. Now, surely, folks, this was a revenue generation scheme that someone in the county offices thought would be a great way to fill the county coffers. Talk about disconnect from reality. These govpreneurs, using the power of the state to make that money, that's what a govpreneur is, showed a lot of initiative and imagination. And, and I got to say, you know, uh, self-initiative when they came up with this brilliant plan. This, this incident happened on Monday, September 12th, just two days after Irma first struck Florida. According to the News 7 report, Cel Kelso Perez, or Celso Perez, was busy working on rebuilding, repairing, and cleaning up after Irma when the local county code enforcer arrived to offer a helping hand. Now, that helping hand came in the form of a threat to Perez that he better get that fence prepared, the fence that had been down by Irma, else he was going to pay a fine. So Howard uh, Finkelstein, the New 7 Miami legal expert, said of this incident, this is outrageous. After Irma, people were stressed, they were worried, and for a government official to slap a warning notice on them to add to their misery is insulting. Incredibly, it is legal. But should Miami-Dade County be doing it? No. The timing was awful. Now, now, folks, the use of the term legal is amusing at best. And it reflects a certain level of conditioning that uh, Howard has probably not even realized he is suffering under. The rule of law myth conditioning that gets you to believe that legal equals moral or right. See, Howard's problem is with the timing, not with the laws themselves that allow for this type of code enforcement to take place. Still, Howard decided to do some investigating, and uh, hats off to him for that. I, you know, great, good job. And, and, but what he found was that, that, that Kelso reported, uh, that, that, that what Kelso reported was hardly unique. From the News 7 article, we learned this. After Irma, the county handed out 680 pool barrier safety notices and 177 electrical hazard safety notices to homeowners suffering damages from Irma. Now, as for the county, they stood by their decision to hand out these notices right after Irma. A building official wrote, the safety notice is neither a notice of violation warning nor a citation. It is, an impor it is important that we reach residents to the Im in the immediate aftermath. Of I can't even read this hardly. It's hard to, to get this through. I'm, I'm going to start again. I'm going to try to do this as, <coughs> pardon me, as, as contained as I possibly can. The safety notice is neither a notice of violation warning nor... A citation. It is important that we reach residents in the immediate aftermath of the storm because that is when conditions are most dangerous and taking steps to protect life is a critical part of the recovery process. Folks, 
they can say what they want uh, in the Miami Dade office. In point of fact, Perez was threatened with fines by the code enforcer. This was no courtesy call. This was no effort to keep anyone safe. Now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> let me let me get in the right mood for this because I'm going to give you the frank version of that response from a building official. And I'm going to do it uh, as if I was able to somehow magically translate from the BS governor speak to cold, hard reality speak. Yeah, the safety notice is simply a way for us to catch as many people as we can in a difficult situation. So we can increase the likelihood that a little later on when we come back around, we'll catch a significant enough people still in violation that we might be able to raise some revenues for our coercive enterprise, the Miami-Dade County government. Sure, sure, we realize almost everyone who has damages that creates unsafe conditions will naturally want to fix these damages, and they will. But we cannot let a crisis go to waste. There's money to be made, and we mean to make it. Now, get out of my face, because I have to take second nap. See, that's, I don't know. I, I should, uh, maybe, if I, may, it's possible if, if there's an app out there, if there's not an app out there, somebody should think about designing an app an app that will automatically you can whenever a government official speaks you could just just put that put your phone right up to them and through the app the bs govpreneur speak will be translated to to cold hard reality speak now folks local media outlets like news 7 miami walk a fine line between serving their audience the citizens of miami dade county and serving the source for most of their news that drives that audience to their platform governments like Miami Dade County uh, government. Now you can see that effort to kind of walk that balance in the closing paragraph of the article, which we're going to quote from here. Should the county have been handing out notices right after the storm? The county thinks absolutely. They are helping to save lives. Kelso says by hitting him with that after the storm, all they're doing is creating more stress and headaches for homeowners trying to clean up and rebuild. Whose side do you take? Come on. Serious. Like, come on. Of course, anyone with a modicum of common sense, I realize that excludes politicians, realizes this is not a question that anyone needs to ask. What the county coercive enterprise is doing is transparent and plain to see. It's out there hustling for that governor dollar. News 7 Miami knows it as well. But they know they can't outright say it. In this case, they don't even hint at the reality. I mean, if you read their article, which is is linked in 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 the uh, in in the article that I wrote on iState.tv, which is you'll find the link in the description and in the comment. If you read the article, the tone is just this is this is insensitive. This is more than insensitive, folks. This this is Govpreneur in action. So. So in, in this case, uh, uh, I, I, again, they're, they're not even going to hint at it. They're not going to imply it. They're going to stay the heck away from it. And you know why? You know why they, they're not doing it? Because they, they, they can't. Because if they do, they'll be cut off from getting the inside scoop on the stories that drive traffic to their platform. But here at iState, <laughs> we have no such dependence on governments for our information. So we can freely tell you plainly, frankly what they're really up to when they sent a code enforcer to harass a man just days after his home was walloped by Hurricane Irma. You know, folks, <laughs> without government, who would assure us that we would be fined as much as possible while we were busy struggling to repair the damages wrought by a natural disaster? You survived a natural disaster. <laughs> Now you just have to survive the govpreneurs. So I am Paul Gordon with iState.tv. This is a Newswatch commentary. And as usual, I'll plead for you to please like, share, comment, and be sure you invite your friends to this party because this is a party, right? It's a party. And above all else, be sure you subscribe to iState. Right here, that's youtube.com forward slash iState. 
And after you subscribe, you'll see a little bell. And when you see that bell, you hit that bell so you get the latest notifications when we do our next video. And you never know when we're going to do our next video. It might be once a day. It might be three times in a day. You never know. So hit that, hit that bell to get the latest notification. I'm Paul Gordon. I'll see you. I'll see you the next time I see you.